Venture Seed Fund makes seed stage venture investments in base of the pyramid startups in India. So what does the investment landscape in India look like? I'm going to pose that question to Dave Richards, who's founder and managing partner of the United Seed Fund. Dave, great to have you here. Describe the lay of the land, your vision of India's investment landscape, your sense of it rather. So uh, we just started this fund uh, back just a few months ago uh, because we think there's a great opportunity to invest in uh, a growing number of quality entrepreneurs who are starting businesses uh, with uh, the target market of serving very large low-income populations. And uh, we see this as one of the, the gaps in the market uh, that uh, these, these entrepreneurs who are coming to us are struggling to find that, that initial seed capital. Um, for these businesses. It, it's in, they are in sectors that um, angel investors don't normally invest and uh, the larger venture funds are not able to make typically these smaller investments. So um, we see it as a great opportunity to um, invest in uh, both uh, uh, helping entrepreneurs move forward and ultimately building the ecosystem in India. You know, in almost every interview you've given, you've said the United Seed Fund is sector agnostic, geography agnostic. You must be getting a lot of proposals then uh, for funding. Uh, really then, what is the criteria? What is the broad framework within which um, you're evaluating investments? Sure. Potential investments. Sure, that's great. So we put up on our website um, uh, that we are sector agnostic, but we give examples of some of the sectors that we are, um, are really focused on or more likely to be a good fit for us. Uh, generally, the, the sectors are services kinds of businesses, as an example. So we do get people come to our site and, and see that that's what we do, and they tell us they want us to invest in their real estate company or their hotel. Um, but you know, increasingly, you know, those are easy, easy decisions. Um, because, um, but we are looking cross-sector, and you know, we're looking at uh, four different areas in particular that we think um, uh, are interesting. One is uh, education and education technology, again, serving um, base of pyramid. Um, we're looking at livelihoods, and those tend to be things that improve income in some way, whether through employability or training or job placement or things of that nature. Um, we're looking at um, agriculture and things that are disruptive startups that are improving the, the, the income and, and the, um, the, the sustainability of farmers uh, in India, which is the largest single segment of employment in India. Uh, and the fourth area is a, a more of a grab bag of basic necessities. So whether it be energy, health care, uh, water, areas where um, uh, affordable solutions are still needed because lots of people don't um, have access to affordable solutions. So what are the funds at your disposal? I mean, the United Seed Fund, uh, give us the numbers. Sure. So we've um, announced that we have closed uh, initially an $8 million U.S. Earlier this year. Yeah, earlier this year. And um, we're um, now starting to invest, uh, invest that. And we are targeting to make between, invest in 30 to 40 companies with this fund that we've set up. Um, That's one fund. Is there anything else in the pipeline? Yeah, so actually, we've actually structured um, our fund actually into two components. One is an offshore fund, which uh, off, offshore or international investors are investing into. And we've also uh, are in the process of setting up a domestic India fund. Uh, that's a rupee-based fund that Indian investors um, are investing into. And the size? And um, we haven't um, uh, announced the size yet of our, of our India fund, but it will be coming out soon, and it's still subject to SEBI approval. And when, by when do you hope to close it? So uh, again, subject to SEBI approval, we're, we're targeting for sometime in uh, the, probably the July, August timeframe. Okay. You've already got a sense of um, enterprises that appeal to you because you've made uh, a few investments already. Yeah. Pick the most interesting one, describe it so that everyone who's watching gets a sense of what Unitas is looking for. Sure. Well, that's a hard decision because <laughs> we, like, we like all of our uh, companies we've invested in, but let me highlight a couple of them and people can see the rest of them on, on our website. Um, so we invested in a company called Hippocampus Learning Centers, uh, which is uh, based out of Bangalore, but operates in rural Karnataka. And what they do is they um, have set up a model for very affordable but quality uh, kindergarten and after school uh, tutorial programs. They're targeting families that can afford um, only two to three dollars per month for their student. So they've created a very uh, uh, a new model that's very cost efficient but they brought in a quality program. So something that you'd be able to get in an urban environment but is not available in the villages. 
Um, and so we're very pleased. They've, I think, launched now in 80 villages, if I remember the number, and they're, this next school year they're, they're adding more. Um, and they're continuing to refine their model um, with the goal of, of, of ultimately reaching thousands of villages, um, bringing this new kind of um, education quality that just doesn't, doesn't exist in these villages. Uh, when, when you're looking and evaluating uh, business models, is scalability a huge important criteria? It, it really is, and part of the reason that it, it, scalability is so important is because these tend to be very low margin businesses. You're talking about, as in the, in the education case, that the, a family's only paying two to three dollars, dollars a month. Know, or in, in rupees, you know, up to you know, maybe 150, 200 rupees um, level. So you've got to have, um, and then you have costs that, that, that go behind that, so you're getting a relatively small margin, so you have to have a high volume to cover your, your corporate um, overhead of managing this kind of business. Um, it's also important to us, so it's important from the business being sustainable, um, but also it's important to us because we are very interested in seeing impact and positive social impact on large populations. So that's a key thing for us as well. I'm curious, how do you source ideas? Um, the website, I'm sure you get uh, many people reaching out to you via the website. But that aside, the, unite, the larger Uniters family, does that also serve as a sourcing ground? Yeah, I, I would say people ask this a lot, and it, what's really interesting is we get um, referrals and, and leads for uh, investments from a huge number of locations. Um, so yes, we get it from our website, we do get it from the rest of the Unitas group, we get it from the entrepreneurs that we've invested in as a part of the Unitas group. Um, we get it from other investors um, who are looking for uh, either a co-investor or it's too um, small or early of a stage uh, investment for them. Um, we get referrals from incubators, I and mean, there's just a whole range of different ones. Um, and part of it is that we're uh, offering a relatively unique product, which is this seed investment, um, and uh, a methodology of that we can move actually quite quickly and make investments, and we're actually uh, perceived as a, a very positive investor. A move quickly. I I've read that you know your ideal time frame is four weeks um, to close, and. I, you know, is that viable in India? Has it worked for you so far? Yeah, so I would say that for uh, all of our initial investments, what, what we target to commit is once we've agreed to a term sheet, um, that it's within four weeks we can have assigned uh, investment documents and then we can do funding. And so uh, I'm pleased to say that for all of our investments so far, initial investments, we've been able to, to meet that. Um, part of it is, one of the reasons it, it, we can do that is because we have standardized documentation mm. that doesn't require a lot of negotiating, a lot of lawyer time, uh, a lot of back and forth. Um, a second thing is the, the standard term sheet and documentation that we use, um, we've explicitly designed it to be very reasonable and fair. Um, so we're not going in saying, okay, here's our offer, but we really expect to negotiate a whole bunch of things down. We go in and come in and say, hey, here's really the package. And it, because um, in, we think we've got a pretty good package and a very fair offer, we don't have to spend a lot of time and money negotiating and spending time on lawyers. What about return expectations? So, um, you know, when we, we're, we're a, a fund and we're, uh, uh, we're looking at uh, making, as I said, 30 to 40 investments um, in, for the 30 to 40 companies uh, with this fund. So, um, you know, we're expecting that um, overall we're going to be able to provide a strong return to investors. Um, what's going to happen though in reality, just in, in, in the law of numbers, is some of the companies are going to um, not do well. They're not going to make it. There's mm -hmm. not going to be any money coming back to us. Um, we expect another group of companies will do okay. So we'll maybe get our money back or around that. And then we're really expecting that some of the companies will have very um, uh, very great success and that we'll get a large larger amounts of money back or multiples of money back so our approach is to go in and invest in companies where we think each of them are in that latter category up front because but we don't know what's going to happen and this is the 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 risk um that of is being a seed investor seed, exactly a seed investor is um we purposely choose ones we don't choose ones that we think are not going to work <laughs> Obviously, we, we, we're, we're choosing ones that we think have this potential. So that that is a criteria, um, and you know, so we have to see some sort of potential of how we could maybe get ten ten times our money back um, over a number of years. 
And um, it doesn't mean we'll realize that, and we're not expecting that that will happen with each one, but we want to see that, that potential because then th that kind of balances out the ones that don't, don't work out as far as us being able to return money and return it to investors. You come to India often. You, you know, you rolled up your sleeves investing right here in India, and uh, Unitas Labs must bring you to India as well. So previously, I actually ran Unitas Labs, yes. um, but I left Unitas Labs last year. Um, that's, Unitas Labs is the incubator part of the Unitas Group. Yes. And so, um, so you're very familiar with India. I mean, that's the point absolutely. that I was trying to yes, make. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, what are the gaps that you see in just the whole ecosystem here? I mean, just pick something that has been particularly frustrating or, or tough to navigate um, as a seed investor. You know... Uh, I mean, there's the obvious things. There's infrastructure issues that everyone faces. Uh, and not only are they a pain for us getting around. Uh, but, but for the, the enterprises that absolutely. are working on the ground. Yeah. And, and it because, slows them down. That's right. It slows them down. And it, it makes, things, makes things harder. Um, but, you know, um, uh, th these are obstacles. Um, there's legal complexity obstacles in India. Um, our uh, in investment agreement is much longer than I would like it to be <laughs> um, because of the way Indian law works and the way you have to set up certain provisions and things like that. Um, so there's lots of rooms for improvement. Um, I, I think, though, that we feel like uh, despite that, you know, or in spite of that, we, um, we can move ahead. Um, um, you know, I would like to see... Um, uh, you know, n more um, sort of uh, accelerator, incubator type models that that uh, that deliver quality entrepreneurs, because um, that would be um, a very a more efficient or another channel of efficient um, pipeline for us for finding entrepreneurs. In many ways, the the accelerators can provide more of a filtering process that helps. It doesn't mean that we don't need to evaluate investments, but. Um, uh, we're very impressed with um, the, the work that uh, groups like CIIE have done and sort of um, filtering to pick uh, entrepreneurs that, they, that, that have potential and then helping them through that process. So more of things like that, I think, would be very helpful. Well, Dave, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you.